In this video I'm going to convert the Hornby Firth of Clyde locomotive from DC to DCC. It's a non-DCC ready model with a tender driven ring field motor. That's similar to the City of Glasgow conversion I showed in a previous video. I'll show a bit more of how I did it than in that City of Glasgow conversion, applying some of the things I learned when doing it. You can see here it's model number R2104, British Railways Britannia Class 7, mixed traffic number 70050, Firth of Clyde. Here's the locomotive in its original box. The model dates from 2008 and it's not been used very much. I just need to quickly show that it is still working on the analog DC track. I think this is working fine. Here's the locomotive upside down now and um, it's the opposite from the City of Glasgow that I did uh, the other video of. It um, unscrews with a screw at the front this time and there are some little tabs at the back that, that hold it in. So um, I'll unscrew that. Tender body just pulls off. Quite tough, but there it is. And now we can see what we're looking at, the ring field motor in the in the tender, surrounded by a couple of weights. Um, and we'll have to do a bit of a job on that to get it working. And uh, the pickups, I'm guessing, is a sim similarly um, one side from the locomotive chassis and another from the tender. As the power now goes to the decoder before the motor, we need to insulate the motor brush connections from the rail inputs. This is easy for the red wires, as they're already insulated, but not the black, so this connection will have to be insulated. And that means probably putting a plastic screw and uh, any other insulation in at this point. The main things I need are a TTS sound decoder for Britannia. It's R7143, uh, still available on eBay at the time of making this video. It has been replaced uh, with the new Hornby HM7000 Bluetooth decoder. It requires a sound download, uh, which is available for the Britannia class. But the principle of fitting is, is, is the same for this uh, non-DCC ready locomotive. Um, I'm also going to need some connectors in case um, I want to connect the speaker into diff away from the decoder. Um, and perhaps, uh, so I've got those for power and uh, the speaker connections. A small plastic screw uh, to replace the one in the uh, tender for the insulation of the brush connection. I'm going to undo this screw so that I can replace it with a plastic one. So there's no direct connection to the tender body. I don't have an exact screw to replace this as it has a greater thread pitch than anything I could get. So I'm going to drill it out and use an M3 die to create a thread for my M3 plastic bolt. It's a bit risky this. Um, I'm going to use a pillar drill in order to keep things steady. I've marked the distance it needs to go with a bit of black tape. Okay, here goes. A 
I've put a piece of tape on just to stop the tab from moving and now I'll try to tap out a thread. So let's see if the plastic bolt will go in and hold. It's actually left sticking out a little bit so I'm going to have to put a couple of washers in. Now that that's installed, I have to cut the connections and take the capacitor off. Luckily there are wires soldered to the tabs um, that I can use to connect to the decoder. Just remove those right now. So that's them separated and now I've got to think about where to place uh, the decoder and lead the wires. I've just got to check that the brush connections are insulated from the tender chassis. Okay, that looks like they are. The best place is the locomotive body shell. The speaker has to be removed from its its casing, um, but the decoder will fit fine in here. So it's just a matter of taping them up. I've taped the speaker in with a bit of double-sided sticky tape that's really sticky and um, some electrical insulation tape just to prevent any shorting from the speaker um, connections and the double-sided sticky tape again to hold the decoder down onto the uh, locomotive body shell which is pretty pretty sticky stuff it should hold it and and here we've got the connectors ready to connect and um, all the different bits we want to there's an underside of the body shell uh, which fits in in there and that seems to be fitting in okay also just check that the um, locomotive chassis will fit back in, and uh, and it does. So, so that's that's fine from that perspective too. I'm going to use this four-way connector to join the rail supplies to the decoder from the tender, and the supply back to the motor. I can use the red and black wires for rail to decoder, but I'll use yellow for orange green for grey for the supply from the decoder to motor. The correct colours are shown in the diagram that follows. There's not much room between the locomotive and tender and I think the best placement is to stick uh, the connector just onto the pony truck between the body and the truck and that will mean the wires moving at least part of the right way across the joint when the locomotive is on curves. Here is the 8-pin plug, the colours arranged as in the diagram. And if I just turn it over, I can solder the wires to those uh, connector pins. You could do this by connecting the plug all together and soldering wire to wire, but this keeps it all together. So that's the connections to the decoder soldered on with a little bit of heat shrink just to protect the join. Now for the tender connection, of red to red we've got three red wires here and black to black we've got two black wires here and yellow and green will go to the motor. Now as far as I can tell from reading on the internet, the orange wire is the positive connection to the motor 
so it should go where the red wires went previously. In the case here, of course, orange is yellow. That's to try and make sure it goes in the correct direction. If not, then I'll reverse the motor connections. There's all the connections soldered onto the tender with heat shrink to insulate and protect them. I've routed the wires in the tender under this weight where there is space for them. I've taped up the wires on the tender to tidy them up. On the locomotive, I've routed the cables through the boiler to where the firebox would be. So I'll fit the boiler casing back and then the chassis. And now it's ready for testing. So here is Firth of Clyde set up on the rolling road now, uh, ready for testing. So let's see if we can... I've programmed it already um, as uh, CV number 30. And uh, now I'll test the sound. And the horn. and actually going. So I think that can be considered a successful test. Um, I'll have to I'll try it on the track now, um, which might be problematical because there are really only two pickups on the uh, left-hand side for the uh, for the tender. So it might stop and start occasionally, um, and something else will have to be done for that. Um, but in the meantime, we'll give it a go on the track now. So we've immediately run into the problem of poor contacts uh, from the wheels. Um, so that will have to be sorted, uh, perhaps in the same way as I did the Firth of Clyde, where I actually put an extra pickup carriage uh, behind the locomotive in order to be able to supply continuous power. I've made a connection to the red and black wires to a connector leading to a coach, which has pickups. The one I did for the city of Glasgow, uh, which had the same problem and which worked fine after doing this procedure. So um, hopefully I'll go out and connect it up.
So that's it tested now and it seems to be working fine. Um, one or two wee refinements on the connector wires and I think we'll be there. And it'll be great to see this locomotive running around on the layout again. It's a, it's a really nice local. Okay, well thanks for watching uh, this video. Bye for now.